after think we are live you can start hello am i audible yeah hello good evening and welcome to all the delegates and viewers for this today's webinar this webinar is brought to you up by team sinoden first of all uh, i would introduce sinoden myself dr pratik bam i am a second year postgraduate student from department of prostho and i'm public relations head team sinoden i am co-hosting this session along with dr anu ashish ma'am who is membership director team sinoden along with us we have dr anmol bagadia a founder and ceo team sinoden sinoden is a unique platform for the first time in india a digital healthcare platform which provides and enhances a good relationship between the patients and the doctors and also enables a real time appointment scheduling system our goal to create a easy access to healthcare services and communication ways or appointment scheduling system not only between the dentist and the patients but also for medical practitioners diagnostic lab to the radiological services and pharmaceutical services and also research and educational programs for the doctors to enhance their knowledge and keep them updated regarding the same sinoden bring together at economic prices and minimum waiting time because everyone has 24 hours and we have to use it without wasting sinoden is here to create precious healthy smiles on our patients faces with minimum effort and maximum welfare sinoden is an initiative that will put all its efforts to create the beautiful smiles on our patients faces for now and always now patients do not have to wait for long queues and the busy dentist when they get a toothache sinoden is also working for the social welfare and humanity to enhance the quality of life by providing the healthcare needs the health awareness and the free treatments with this i come to our today's webinar the topic of our today's webinar is nuances of digital implantology for our today's session we have none other than dr arpit sikri sir dr arpit sikri sir has uh, uh, has passed his undergraduate and post graduation with gold medal uh, he has post graduate diploma in hospital administration and he is a fellow of world congress of oral implantology he has been working as a senior lecturer in the department of prosthodontics santosh dental college santosh deem to be university ghaziabad new delhi he is he has worked as senior resident in the most prestigious dental institute of our country that is the molana azad institute of dental sciences new delhi he is the youngest dental surgeon in india to have completed his pg diploma in hospital management from the national institute of health and family welfare and that too with distinction he has also been conferred with diplomat fellowship in field of implantology by world congress of oral implantology tokyo japan throughout his academic career he has been awarded gold medals and being the topper of university back to back he has authored a book on oral pathology and there's a scientific meditech publishers he has his uh, he has to his credits around 28 books uh, under lambert academic publishing and more than 100 national as well as international publications in various reputed journals he is the editor of webmed central associate editor of current dental research journal and uh, assistant editor of asia pacific dental journal and eye dentistry journal he is the panel of various Uh, national and international journal as an editorial board member he is an active uh, he is actively associated with various association like ips ida idrr aha etc he has been recently appointed appointed as general secretary of oral and maxillofacial implantology council of india by dentist career he has presented a keynote guest lecture and faculty presentation in various national and international conferences moreover he is the youngest dental surgeon in of the world to have been appointed as an organizing committee of dentrens 3 in 1 international virtual dental conference 2020 he is the council member of leherman group he has been a president of ndd sf dental society from punjab state he has also contributed in various books like uh, uh, the textbook of the conservative and restorative dentistry textbook of endodontics indirect restorations target mds mcqs book dental matrix brahmastra aims 25 and the list is long he has been conferred with many awards namely the budding dentist award 
Dental Youth Icon 2019, 2009, Student Ambassador Youth Icon 2009, and, uh, and mentor by publishing Group Alzheimer's, the best postgraduate student of Prostron in India in 2016. <laughs> he has been recently awarded Doctor's Excellence Icon Award for excellent work in the field of dentistry by Genius's World Record on the occasion of National Doctor's Day. He has been awarded and honored then by the by then Chief Minister of Punjab, Sri Prakash Singh Badal, uh, for securing the highest marks during his BDS and professional university exam. He was also awarded with IDA Colgate Scholarships and RN Cooker Merit Award throughout his academic career. Apart from academics, he is actively associated with sports and cultural activities. He has been a national level national level table tennis player and won many awards for the same. He has also won medals for various sports events. With this, I complete his introduction. It, uh, it is my hearty pleasure and honor to welcome you, sir, for our today's webinar. Dr. Arpit Sikri, sir, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pradeek. Uh, shall I share my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so thank you uh, once again. A very good evening to one and all. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pratik, for uh, such a lovely introduction about Team Synodent. And uh, when you were introducing me, I thought I have turned uh, 60 plus today. So thankfully I am still young and uh, jokes apart, thank you so much uh, for such a lovely introduction. Thanks to team Synodent for giving me uh, such a great opportunity to present before you as a speaker for today. Thank you Dr. Anmol Bagadia ji for uh, such a lovely honor and Dr. Anu Vashisht present over here. As introduced, I am Dr. Arpit Sikri currently working as senior lecturer in the department of prostodontics, Santosh Dental College, Santosh deemed to be university, Ghaziabad. And uh, hearty greetings to my dear friends in uh, profession. Rather, I would say namaste to you, to one and all. And uh, I feel any presentation, any presentation or, uh, you know, when you, when you are starting with is incomplete without the blessings of Ma Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge. So let me start my presentation, taking the blessings of Ma Saraswati ji. So I'll be starting with my topic that is nuances of digital implantology. But before that, as we all know, dental implants uh, dental implants is known as a third dentition, is the emerging discipline, is the most preferable choice of treatment as far as the prosthetic rehabilitation is concerned. And it's much over, you know, preferable over the removable or any fixed processes. So obviously it's a gold standard treatment, the first choice of treatment as far as the patients are concerned. Well, uh, let me move down the lane to the digital dentistry. We all know the digital dentistry or the digitization has been a new and a fascinating chapter in dentistry. It has really brought the evolution and revolution in dentistry. And why not, not in implantology? So, you know, an active research is going on as far as the dental implant, the digital implantology is concerned. And obviously, you know, there, there, there are always controversies uh, when we, we, we are doing active research, there have been people, there have been, you know, researchers uh, who are in favor, who are against. So that is how, you know, the hot research is going on into this topic. Well, uh, moving down to the history, to the evolution of uh, dental implantology, uh, let me salute uh, this great man, Per Ingvar Brainmark, 
the father of implantology who gave us beautiful principles of osho integration and delayed loading protocols it was he who started off uh, to experiment uh, as a swedish orthopedic surgeon he he uh, saw the osho integration taking place into the rabbit's fibula if i talk about the evolution of digital dentistry it is more interesting as it was uh, dr patrick j henretti who was formerly known as the father of cad cam who gave a device known as pronto which was a digital device but again hats off to dr franquois dure who who was doing his thesis his research on the cad cam optical impressions so it was him who actually introduced uh, the field of cad cam into dentistry well a very important thing whenever we talk about the incorporation of digitization into medicine and particularly into dentistry we always follow a very important concept of digital workflow how to start with what should be you know the diagnosis how to go about what can be the treatment modalities and how to fabricate the processes so it's not only in prosthetics it's you know in every field of dentistry the digitization has totally changed the landscape of dentistry well moving back to basics we have read about the conventional dental implantology and this is what we have been doing preparing implant bed osteotomy site preparation placement of the implant followed by a cover screw placement closing the flap in case you are using a flap open technique suturing the area and while doing the second stage surgery we again open the flap we again expose or remove the cover screws we place the healing abutment again moving back the flap so as a proper emergence profile is created once you feel a beautiful gingival collar is created we place the abutment tighten the screws followed by placement or the final restoration but is this, is this the only implantology we are practicing let me bring you to the change see how times have been changing and let me welcome you to the world of digital implantology well before moving into the digital implantology digitization has three very important components or three very important concepts that is the scan the design and milling of the prosthesis let's take them one by one with very brief videos we start with the scanning with the help of intra oral scan or extra orally or a lab scan so we start with the intra oral scanning we make digital impressions or optical impressions with the help of the intra oral scan we can reproduce the tooth structures the oral cavity onto a desktop and this is how we move in and supposedly if not if we are not scanning intraorally we can also scan with a lab scanner by making impressions into a dimensionally stable material can be additional silicone definitely and then scanning the model into a lab scanner that's the model scanning this is followed by the design of the prosthesis formerly known as the computer aided design so after you have made the impressions a definitely we have to design the processes based on the design of the abutment which i'll take up in elaboration later into my presentation
this is how once we plan we have to prepare we have to design we have to plan the implant or the further crown prosthesis once designing is done we move ahead with the milling now there are two aspects of milling the first is cam computer aided milling or computer assisted manufacturing which is again known as a subtractive manufacturing in which we use a pre sintered block as you can see this goes into a milling machine and whatever design you have given forms like this so this is how through the method of subtraction we can make a number of crowns or other processes through a pre sintered block or it can be a layered by layered manufacturing which is a 3d printed approach and additive approach in contrast to the cam or the subtractive milling so let me welcome you to a very important concept of the digital workflow in implant dentistry well it's a workflow in which every phase of diagnosis planning and treatment is going to be conducted by a digital source so obviously the digital workflow can be an analog so see how we are moving from analog to the digital times an analog approach is generally taken or used with the help of the conventional impression approach a partial digital workflow use a combination partially of the conventional impression and partially of the digital approaches a complete digital workflow as the name suggests uses all the digital approaches right from the diagnosis up till the treatment of the patient a very important approach i would say it's the step wise approach which we have to start right from the diagnosis either it can be various imaging modalities till the fabrication of the final prosthesis let me take all these things one by one very important approach is the cone beam computer tomography we all know it's the gold standard in dental implantology for precise assessment of the bone anatomy and due respect to the vital structures being used so it's a very important approach which has to be taken care for the bone for any vital area which has to be taken care of so a very important concept you have to give due respect to the diagnosis and my teachers used to always tell due respect to my teachers they used to tell me that your your diagnosis if your diagnosis is good you can definitely you can be the master of whatever you are doing so definitely your any rehabilitation any dental treatment you are doing you need to be really good with your diagnostic and diagnostic plan well uh, on a lighter note i would say never leave your implant patients unattended because you see such things can happen into your clinical practice so it's very important you know and as we all know there have been you know lot many studies going on in the uh, evidence to the cone beam computer tomography they have always been the choice of diagnostic modality in dentistry and obviously into dental implantology and if i move down the lane we know that computed tomography ct has really done well as far as the medical imaging is concerned but if we compare the conventional ct with the cone beam computed tomography the kind of radiations are much reduced as compared to the conventional ct so obviously we have to use the cone beam computed tomography much above the ct or mrm there have been a plethora of diagnostic modalities being used you know past more than you know 60 70 years back when we were even using iops the analog approaches and see how we have moved from the 2d to the 3d approaches and this is how we divide the diagnostic modalities into primary and secondary diagnostic modalities now generally we take cbct as the primary and mri magnetic resonance imaging as the secondary diagnostic imaging in implant dentistry and definitely as i was saying there has been a tectonic shift from 
the IOPS, from the OPGs to the CBCT. Although due respect to all these technologies also, because we have been using these technologies, these diagnostic modalities, in fact, wherever and whenever we want. But yes, definitely we have to see the gold standard technology, the digital CBCT has to be given much importance. And the best part, what I feel is Whenever we are dealing with the dental implant surgery, we have to, you know, many of the times we don't know about the vital structures. We have a very good idea of the vital structures with the help of the cone beam computed tomography. So sometimes there have been so many studies in which there have been introduction of accessory canals or some new parameters on anatomical landmarks have been added into. So we need to have a precise knowledge of the vital structures or anatomical landmarks whenever we are dealing in with the digital implantology. And very important is the zygoma or the zygomatic implants. So obviously one needs to be really knowledgeable, skillful, and needs to have a very good idea of the anatomy of the zygomatic or zygoma bone. So uh, definitely they are the longer implants and CBCT has really done wonders when uh, we are dealing in with the zygomatic implants. Well, uh, I won't be much favoring CBCT because of the ionizing radiation being used, but yes, the secondary diagnostic modality that is the magnetic resonance imaging is definitely a road beyond the CBCT. So definitely we have a very good idea of the lower radiation as compared to the CBCT and a good idea about the trabecular bone a very good idea of these soft tissues. But yes, uh, the area of usage, you can say, is not much. And that is why we always, you know, we are quite biased towards the cone beam computer tomography. And yes, I was uh, telling you about the CBCT radiation exposure. There have been recent studies which say that uh, there uh, the radiation shields which have been used can help in prevention of or much they can reduce the radiation exposure to much greater extent. <clears throat> Another very important issue with cone beam computer tomography is uh, production of the metal artifacts. So what happens, we all know that implants, they are metals. So generally, when we are using a metal, we tend to see such image over the CBCT. So uh, in those cases, there have been provision of making impression with the CBCT again, and it can be uh, impression of the, you know, CBCT, we can uh, take a cast and take a cone beam computed tomography of the dental cast. But then yes, uh, again, there have been some more surface or surface details or texture issues when we talk about the dental impressions or the cast. So we need to be really cautious to record the areas of interest with CBCT and not everything should be recorded with CBCT. So always remember, take it a note that what are you digitizing, how you are digitizing, and what is the basic file format. So generally, when we are dealing in either with the bone or either with the teeth, so whenever we are dealing with the bone, it's always good to take CBCT as a gold standard, CBCT as a diagnostic modality into consideration, and the file format is again DICOM, that is digital imaging and communications and medicine. So when you are dealing in with the teeth, try to follow a intraoral or a lab scanner. It's best should be the intraoral scanner. And it's, you know, generally depends on the clinical situation, what you are using. And generally the file format is uh, mostly STL. That is the standard tessellation language file. You can use CBCT, but then there have been issues with the surface texture. The very next step, and I would say a very important step is the photographic digital impression. That's the intraoral scanning impression or the optical scanning of the area where you want to place the implant. You can take a lower uh, jaw scan, upper jaw scan and a bite scan. So that way is you have probably a very good idea of where I want to place the implant. I need to plan my dental implant. So this is how you can help it, this is just like a diagnostic impression, which you generally take. Another very important aspect, what I was saying, it's not only about the diagnosis, the imaging, it's about the 3D planning. 
obviously now you know what is my mesodistal space what is my buccolingual space what is my interocclusal space and based on that you know you have to always plan before doing anything so obviously once you have planned what kind of implant i have to take into consideration and that is how the virtual dental implant planning goes in into the software and a uh, salute to the technology of 3d printing data manufacturing you know you can make your own implants so obviously you can make a custom base implants uh, obviously as per the bone the anatomy the quality the quantity of bone and based on that you know the studies even are saying that if you are using 3d printed dental implants much over the uh, the threaded conventional implants it definitely improvises your osho integration and yes we have been reading so much about the implant surface treatments how to improve the surface topography of the dental implants so a best part is when you can design your implant on your own why can't you create a porous surface or you can definitely improve the surface topography altering the surface topography improvising on your surface topography what more you want now with the incorporation of the digital techniques into implant dentistry well virtual implant planning is followed by virtual dental implant placement so you, you need to you know give full consideration again to the vital structures what you have seen from the cbct either from the mri you know what kind of implant what should be the width of my implant what should be the length everything the angulation the precision how accurate i want to be with the placement of my uh, dental implant so if you plan it before if you are ready you plan it definitely a total success will be with you generally you will be successful in whatever uh, implants you are placing either it's a single implant you are going in with more than single full mouth implants so definitely you have a very good idea of what kind of implants i have to place so this is all based on the software and based on this we can totally see or plan how i will be placing my implant so selection becomes pretty easy and the role of surgical guide is very important we need to fabricate a surgical template based on the scanning we know the diagnostic scanning is already done so we need to prepare a surgical guide either with the help of the subtractive milling that is a cam or either it can be with the help of the 3d printed approach so this is how generally we are using a 3d printed surgical guide or a template based on which we can place and this is our uh, you know 3d printed surgical guide which we can use fabricated from the lab and then we can place it in the patient's mouth and then we can go in or move in with the placement of the dental implant and we have been using into our clinical practices conventional techniques to use with the rapid repair and there have been so many techniques which we have been using in the past for the conventional digital uh, sorry the conventional surgical template but with the incorporation of the digitization i feel the surgical templates being created from the cam or the 3d printed approaches will definitely give you the exact idea or much precision over what you have been making into the conventional approach and i would always recommend that go guided always it it should be like you have to uh, give the best of the best treatment to your patients so always you have to go guided so the 3d printed approaches it can be made the softwares they are well equipped and through this you can you know after you have made the scan you can design your template it depends on the software you are using and you can give it for milling and final fabrication of your surgical template well this reminds me to two very important questions people keep asking why we need to have a surgical guide and yes why we are you know talking so much about the computer assisted implant surgery i feel there have been so many points and the things are self explanatory it definitely builds a lot of confidence the predictability of the treatment or the outcome definitely improves you have to use a flapless approach not every time you have to open the flap conventionally causing a lot of trauma to the flap and subsequently healing issues 
can occur. So your patients are really happy. You can build a very good rapport with your patient by moving in with the flapless impression technique because you know, here is my angulation. This is my precision. I have to keep away from the vital structures. Very less of the less time is used because you are not opening the flap. You're not suturing the sockets and definitely the post-operating healing is best. The post-operating pain is much less. So healing is better, obviously, and you are quite accurate and quite predictable in the treatment which you are doing. So this is what happens when you have planned that this I'll be doing with my surgical guide. So obviously when you are virtually planning, this is how you will place the path of insertion and what you have planned will be the same, what you are ultimately doing into the patient's mouth. And definitely when you have not planned or you are not using the surgical guide, obviously it depends on the skill of the practitioner also, but yes, obviously when you don't have proper idea, it's a cautionary remark, kindly please use surgical guide in each and every case. Once you are skilled enough or once you have, you know, attained those knowledge and skills, obviously you can blindly place so many implants. But yes, I would always prefer, even with the experience of the experienced hands, this is, uh, you know, uh, I would say not an advice, but a request that we should always try to use the surgical guide. So definitely the plan, the planned placement of the implant and what you have, you know, placed will definitely vary. So there will be deviations when you are not using the surgical guide, both for conventional one piece, zygomatic, pterygoid, so many, whatever implants you are using, it's mandatory to use. So obviously this is what we have planned. And now this is what my result is. So definitely my prosthetic rehabilitation, I have to change my treatment plan if I am not using the surgical guide. This really hampers the prognosis of the treatment. So always, my friends, please use the surgical guide. And yes, there it's totally catastrophical if we are not using the surgical guide. You can land up into so many failures in the form of misaligned implants. Implants can be placed either buckly, too buckled, too lingual. It can be placed interproximally. So there can be so many issues if you are not using it. So particularly I'm more concerned with the angulation and position of the implant issues. And very importantly, as I told you, the surgical template is doing wonders as far as the zygoma implants is concerned, because it is uh, not a very easy job to place the zygomatic implants. And in those cases, when you are performing the sinus lot surgery, so it becomes really easy through the angulation position, you know, obviously, and with due respect to the anatomy, definitely you are landing into the safe path. Now, surgical guide is associated with three very important techniques. Either you can use a freehand drilling. If you are quite experienced enough, you can use a static surgical guide or you use a dynamic navigation system. Let's see what they are. And the approaches can be a fully guided. So obviously you have completely edentulous patient. You want to make a template. Obviously I'm talking about the 3D printed digital uh, template, which we are fabricating. You can fabricate a semi-guided in situations which are partially edentulous or a combination of both. So obviously the free hand drilling uh, is generally identifying the depth of the osteotomy preparation. And generally when you, you are quite confident that you can place the implants uh, even without the static or the dynamic navigation system, you can move in. But I would say that try to move in more towards the static or if, uh, you know, if possible towards the dynamic navigation surgical aspects. The static surgical guide again is formed when you don't have the idea of the navigation going on or the surgery. So as the name suggests, static means totally at rest. So when you are planning, you are uh, uh, placing the implant, you know, here I have to place my implant, the position, the angulation will move according to the static surgical guide. But in contrast to the static guide, uh, we have a very beautiful system that is the dynamic navigation system. Now dynamism means that obviously you have taken a DICOM file of the bone that is through CBCT. You have taken the STL file, you have merged both the files you have now the idea of what is going on. I totally call it the trace and place implantology. So 
it has a lot of realism whatever you are doing in the into the patient's mouth you have the idea of where are you going you have the realistic approach to where wherever you are going uh, you are not touching your implant is going well uh, at that particular position and definitely you have to stop at that particular position so it has done again wonders as far as the zygomatic implants are concerned or in case when we are using a quad zygoma concept and not only this you know when we are dealing with the full mouth uh, rehabilitation cases with full mouth implants so uh, in those cases we generally use a longer pterygoid implants which have to be used in the pterygo maxillary complex again uh, again it is uh, uh, something kind of a very blind procedure so you can use a dynamic navigation into these aspects too so it has three very important components so uh, it has a head tracker it has a jaw tracker so your jaw definitely when you have a jaw tracker it will give you the idea of wherever your implant is going this is connected to a screen in which you have the realistic idea of wherever you are placing your implants am i <coughs> going right am i going wrong you have the idea of the position the angulation obviously you are using a surgical guide not without that you are doing but then again you have the idea that i shouldn't go well beyond the vital structures or there should be no harm to the uh, important anatomical landmarks we have again an inbuilt optical handpiece for this so obviously the choice is yours you want to go in for a free hand surgery or a static approach or a dynamic approach so even the evidence says that is always better to move in for a dynamic navigation as far as possible uh, as compared to the static surgical guide and even the free hand implant placement now after we have virtually planned we have virtually placed the implants we have de dealt with the surgical guide we have to place the guide we have to place the implant irrespective of free hand drilling static dynamic system whatever system you are using we have to place the dental implant and we can just take the radiograph accordingly so the choice generally uh, is this is a single implant so they have used the intraoral peripical iops have been used and later we all know that we use a digital custom healing abutment now the advantage of using obviously as i told you healing abutments give you an ideal contour of of the tissue it gives you a beautiful aesthetic profile emergence profile uh, the proper collar a proper smooth finish line around the further processes whichever you have planned so it is uh, a great fun to deal in with cases which are the anterior ones so anterior aesthetic anteriors we are more concerned with the aesthetics so particularly in these cases when we are rehabilitating the customized healing abutment is really doing wonders so one more thing you can do you can create emergence profile through the software so obviously once you are planning or you were placing virtually the implants you can there and then create emergence profile whatever kind of profile you want to make and what you want to look your processes should look like is everything is there with the help of the digital technique a very good concept a topic which is again very close to my heart is the impression so uh, impressions of dental implant i'll be taking it uh, uh, in detail in my subsequent slides so uh, previously we all know we have read about the conventional impression techniques it can be a closed tray it can be a open tray uh, and generally even today if i you go by the evidence they say is that okay uh, you can go in with the open tray impression technique that's really good due respect to the technique and this is how we use the open tray transfer we use uh, dimensionally stable materials like pvs vinyl polysiloxane or polyether if possible so this gives you a beautiful idea of the open tray technique we have to remove this and we can thereby place the analog later and send it to the lab or we can pour the cast if we want to so i feel this is not only the technique which we are using yes we are using it into our current clinical practices but definitely when we are talking about the digital impressions or the optical impressions into implantology a very important concept comes in that is the implant 
scan body. So obviously, if we see the cross section, it has a scan region, it has a body, it has a base, and it's definitely the true representation of the position and orientation of the implant analog or the abutment into the CAD CAM scanning procedures. It has been known by a number of names like the scan body, the scan abutment or the scan post, whichever you feel like you can use. But generally we use the term implant scan body. Now researchers have also told that the impression coping, which we are using in the conventional impression techniques, uh, you add a word CAD CAM into it, it becomes the implant scan body. You can see the intraoral aspect, the four scan bodies have been placed as per the implant placement, which has, uh, you know, it has to be taken the impression and implant scan bodies can be of uh, various types. It can be made of a titanium, a combination of titanium and peak. Now peak is polyether ether ketone. It can be totally made of peak. So it depends on the accuracy, but Evidence says that it's better to use a peak scan body. Now, this is how the scan body is placed. When you have pla once you have placed the dental implant, you have to tighten the scan body. This is available with the manufacturer. You can use any kind of intraoral scanner. This is maybe of a manufacturer which uses a zigzag fashion. You can use any kind of uh, scanner, but then you need to have a good idea of how to scan and starting with the most posterior aspects and coming anteriorly and covering the whole jaw region. So this is how we have to record depending on how many implants you have placed. So it depends whatever number of implants you have placed, you have to place the implants and bodies there in them. Well, uh, uh, an issue, a very important issue I feel is the scan body. No scan body, once you have placed, you have made the impressions. There have been studies which say that there have been linear or angular deviations from the scan body. So in those particular concepts, once you place the abutment, once you tighten the abutment, once you place the processes, there have been slight differences in the scan body and the abutment. But yes, uh, some manufacturers have come up with the idea of scan body matching. So this is how the softwares, they are equipped with the kind of scan body you have used. It will, uh, you know, just scan. And basically based on that, it will give you the customized abutment there and then and beautifully. So there will be no deviations between the scan body and the abutment. So that is known as a scan body matching. This has really, you know, come up as one of the issues. And uh, definitely I would say a, a good first impression can work wonders. Obviously we say first impression uh, shouldn't be the last impression, but it should be the best impression, what you can say. So there have been a lot many, you know, advantages of uh, the digital impressions, I'll be taking it very briefly, which makes me to ask a question, why are we using or repeatedly saying that, okay, digital impressions are far better than the conventional impressions. Well, uh, that reminds me if I move down the memory lane. Uh, this was my situation when I was in BDS third year. As a student, I was doing my, uh, you know, complete denture patient. That was my first patient. And I took the, uh, you know, same eighth impression. So I was in the same situation as this guy is, and uh, my patient was also feeling like this. So my father asked me that, uh, okay, you'll be doing uh, post-graduation. Uh, what is your choice? So I told him uh, very bluntly, I, you know, my first choice, I don't know, but last choice is obviously prostodontics. And see, I am a prostodontist today. So obviously jokes apart, that was the time. And obviously uh, we, we didn't have so much of digital impression technologies into picture. They were just experimented. But now if you see, there have been plethora of uh, the scanners, the designs, the milling machines, they're doing really well. So this is how we are using the technology to the peak. And uh, obviously there has been a big fight between the digital and the conventional impression system. So uh, very hurriedly, I'll be taking it because we all know the first and the foremost thing is obviously the dimensional accuracy. We always want our impressions to you know, avoid any kind of distortion. And uh, this is what uh, dimensional accuracy is given with the help of the digital techniques. Tendency to rescan the impressions, no manipulation issues, and definitely no need to take impressions, the overextended impressions, which can uh, you know, cause a lot of discomfort and trauma to your patient. So that is, that is how you are even building your repo, your communication with your patients. No need to store any kind of cast. 
there is no wastage of any material rather there is no disinfection issues you have to just change the sleeve of uh, the intraoral scanner you have a better communication so obviously your communication with the lab person improves and it's all vice versa so uh, we should always work in a team i feel so this is how the relationship the work authorization improves daily and definitely many many you know patients they hate uh, why to give impressions they are potential gaggers and this is how the answer to this query will be the digital impressions no need to use any kind of facebooks you have a virtual facebook through which you can make the treatment plan and you can use virtual or digital articulators to give you a beautiful idea uh, most commonly in cases when you are uh, you know treating your patients or rehabilitating with the help of full mouth dental implants and even the preference the patients you know they are quite eager to have their impressions with particularly with the digital scanner there is more efficiency more convenience the marginal fit everything you see the time factor is also less so if you uh, if you record the lower jaw the upper jaw obviously if you take a bite scan i think less than a minute you you are able to scan the impressions and is quite time effective your patients are totally impressed with you and in such a short period of time you are making the impressions and even it leads to elimination of so many uh, you know steps so obviously when you are dealing in with your patients is always good because very hurriedly if you take a note on the digital versus conventional so many steps have to be followed as far as the conventional impression approaches is used and it's a uh, you know you can say a very good approach to be used in cases with limited mouth opening and particularly in cases with microstomia and recent of the recent scanners have been uh, you know taken into account this is again been experimented upon uh, with respect to the carious exposures and crack detection so this is something you know apart from prosthodontics that uh, that just i am adding to your knowledge that uh, this also can be taken into account so after uh, impressions obviously when uh, we are we have done scan body exposure everything has been done we have to have a cad cam customized abutment so we need to digitally design a proper abutment we can design on our own with the help of the cad machine that is a computer aided design so properly we can make the abutment we can uh, you know go in for the scanning and designing and one important concept which is related to this is the dynamic abutment concept so this is again used Uh, particularly in the interior aspects where you don't want to give any kind of grafts so this has a off screw you know this has angulated screw channel uh, which has because generally we have to place the interior implants we have to respect the morphology of the bone and we slightly we have we generally place the implants palatally so in those cases particularly the abutments have been designed digitally and that is how uh, a name has been given to it as the dynamic abutment or the dynamic abutment concept so once you have designed the abutment it goes in for milling so it depends on the choice of the prosthesis you want to give a titanium crown you want to give a pfm you want to give a lithium disilicate it all depends on what kind of restoration you are giving this is a screw retained restoration and uh, this is how you can mill your abutments as per your choice totally and very important you have to give a final prosthesis so prosthetic rehabilitation is very important see how from the diagnosis to the final prosthesis you have to take good care of the step wise approach the 12 steps which have been explained in briefly so this is how we give the final uh, prosthesis and uh, i feel if you want to uh successfully deliver a prosthesis you need to give a due respect to the occlusion because it's not totally giving a prosthesis and then you have to say bye bye to your patient i feel uh, due respect and particularly we need to be quite cautious when we are dealing with the implant occlusion so obviously uh, the digital incorporation of the implant correction or scanning is again with the help of the digital device known as a tech scan or a t scan so it gives us an idea of this is not like the articulating papers you were using or okay i need to use this, this much thickness then uh, this is a very beautiful system in which the patient is biting 
and you get there and then realistic idea of the high pressure areas and the low pressure areas so obviously you have to rule out how much is my pressure over the crown and there and then you have to reduce or you have to trim the areas which are offending and in conjunction with the joint vibrational analysis and even with the electromyography so this is how the digital technique has really done once again wonders as far as the occlusal analysis or the computerized occlusion is concerned well let's take once again a total look on the complete digital workflow uh, starting from the digital uh, the diagnosis the digital imaging modalities cbct to the intraoral impression intraoral scan of the lower and the upper jaw the alignment of the bite to check the mesodistal buccolingual interocclusal space for further dental implant 3d planning the kind of processes the kind of implant given the length width height everything all the dimensions being planned virtually giving due respect to the vital tissues and this is how you can design your crown virtually again idea of the landmark how much jumping distance to be given based on this you are fabricating the surgical guide with the cam approach subtractive or the 3d printed surgical guided or template approach so this is again with the help of stereolithography the sla technique of the 3d printed approach once fabricated you have you need to move into the meticulous placement of the dental implant i would say is the most ideal placement you place it you check in you do a trial into the patient's mouth you place the implant in a true position angulation followed by the customized healing abutments to give you a beautiful idea of the emergence profile a beautiful profile collar ideal tissue contour and again making the digital impression of the implant scan bodies a very important furthermore sending it to the cad designing of the dental implant abutment that is a cad cam customized abutment followed by milling of the abutment like this and the final prosthetic rehabilitation this is the ideal restoration which we have so see how you know the workflow is very systematic right from the diagnosis till the final treatment or prosthetic rehabilitation of the patient well in spite of uh, so much you know every coin has two ends so there have been some issues uh, somehow the learning curve is uh, quite steeper we need to learn more and more because of the in incorporation or upgraded features of the software the operating field has to be dry we need to have adequate lab support and communication with the lab and there have been issues with the long span restorations so generally the idea of open tray impression versus the digital impression is again this only because uh, what i feel is that full mouth implants and you are making a scan of the full mouth implants is slightly not a very possible kind of a thing so in those cases what you can do is you can make the impression with the help of the uh, open tray impression technique and i'll just show you a scannable elastomer kind of a thing i'll just show you in my subsequent slide and this is how you can make the impressions but there has been some problem with the scanning of the soft tissues but that is just when you are dealing in with the cad cam digital dentures and obviously i feel uh, economics or financial implications play a greater role so that also has to be because there have been overhead costs there have been so many financial costs being uh, associated with the scanners and furthermore with the printers so they they have to be taken into due consideration so this is what i was telling you i completely believe in one thing that uh, old is gold so obviously it's not like that months we are totally speaking on the digital impression or the implant placement approaches we have to totally forget about the conventional impression i feel that there are scannable elastomeric impression materials quite dimensionally stable they need to be you know when you are making the impression with the open tray impression technique or either with the closed tray impression technique you need to scan either the impression or the model in a desktop or a laboratory scanner 
this will give you a beautiful idea of where and how your implants have been recorded so generally if there is a case of full mouth implantology i would really suggest or this is my own view or experience to make an impression and scan it and then probably you can give a beautiful uh, designing and milling of the prosthesis well when we talk about the indications i feel we have read about so many um, you know focal points of uh, the digitization into dental implantology and what not it has been you know it has a broad horizon of uh, usage of the dental digital implant starting from the removable implant supported implant supported fixed implant maxillofacial prosthesis the implant full mouth rehab obviously uh, creating more aesthetics and not only that the digital dental uh, thing has really uh, you know incorporated into the education and research particularly if i am talking about these stuff and the turbulent times so the implant supported i will be taking this one by one very hurriedly we give implant supported overdenture this is how the workflow goes uh, we need to use a combination of the conventional impression approaches in conjunction with the digital impression approaches and this is how we go in for the implant supported uh, which can be a ball supported bar supported and i was re reading a recent data which says that uh, zirconia made bars have also done really well when you scan them you you can give beautiful uh, prosthesis to your patient so this can always be given uh, you know this is how the workflow goes the rehabilitation you are giving a single implant that's the best thing a single missing tooth rehabilitated with the implant is always the choice of treatment so this is how posteriorly implant supported fixed dental prosthesis can be given not only posterior anteriorly because you are creating beautiful emergence profile and also in this you can uh, you know do wonders as far as the fixed dental processes in in interiors is concerned imaged implants yes uh, there has been issue but yes it has been researched upon and uh, much of the much studies are required to prove it and hybrid dentures when you give a framework of titanium or maybe a peak framework a pec framework you can give over which you can give a fixed removable kind of a prosthesis and salute to the digital technology doing wonders as far as the maxillofacial rehabilitation so the fabrication of you know maxillofacial patients they are quite traumatized because uh, because of the absence of maybe ear as to what we are rehabilitating the ear processes we can take a digital note we can uh, you know we have softwares which can scan the whole face so we have a facial scanning softwares which can scan and give you idea of any absence of ear one ear both the ears or maybe the epithesis is absent the pinna is absent so you need to uh, you know fabricate the surgical stent for this and ultimately you can place the uh, extra oral very small implants can be placed they can be scanned you can design the processes and this is how even it's not only about the tooth it's all about the maxillofacial processes also the orbital processes or the eye processes ocular ones they can also be rehabilitated if you take a proper you know diagnostic issues or uh, image uh, imaging into concern you can always go in for the rehabilitation right from the surgical aspect diagnosis till the fabrication of your restoration and it's really doing wonders you see the beauty of digitization being incorporated into the maxillofacial processes doing really well not only this there have been so many trauma cases coming up then why not you know patients oncologic patients uh, traumatized patients who need mid facial reconstruction now very unfortunate but yes uh, you know science is doing really well and how digital dentistry is doing good when we place uh, the custom based this is a pmma implant very big implants you can also place polyether ether ketone because they are known for being orthopedic and smilel very big implants or uh, such prosthesis can be fabricated again with a 3d printed approach so this is how you know this is how we are working as a team oral surgeons and you know the oncologists everybody we are helping each other every professional is doing well as a team and this is how as a prosthodontist you can give the idea we are very much concerned with the reconstruction so many times 
you have a surgical bone defect and you don't get adequate bone and you you know you are uh, dealing with a conventional you want to have a prps prfs all due respect to all these surgical procedures which are being used but then there have been times when the patients are not looking forward to go in or move in for the surgical reconstruction with the graft or allogenic bone graft or maybe the other uh, approaches which are being used so the best part what you can do you can prepare a 3d printed you have scanned the area of the surgical defect you can prepare the titanium meshes or you know when you are preparing it you can basically prepare it and you can place it with the help of the tenting poles or screws to oppose the 3d print see how beautifully the 3d printed meshes or titanium meshes have been totally uh, reconstructed the surgically defected area so 3d printing or the digitization is again doing wonders as far as the maxillofacial reconstruction is concerned and as i told you about the full mouth reconstruction or rehabilitation with the help of implants always remember use a combination of you know the old is gold the conventional impression and the scanning so obviously you will be doing really good when you are dealing with such cases and uh, as we all know the digital implantology is not totally what i am doing clinically but yes in these turbulent times i have been uh, you know totally uh, this is like the online education or training how the demonstrations have been going on during these unprecedented times and this is how uh, even online or offline teaching you can obviously with the help of models 3d printed educational models you can obviously tell your students or your uh, colleagues about how to place the dental implant and all those procedures so the e learning has been doing really well with the help of various you know innovative tools in the 3d planning this is how you know we are doing really well in these turbulent times and i would say that uh, uh, a very few implications of dental implantology still uh, we are into uh, the tough times of covid and i feel uh, digital impressions they are doing really well as far as particularly the incorporation of digitization see how beautifully it has changed the whole landscape of the dental implantology and this is how during these unprecedented times uh, you know you know you, right from the diagnosis up till the fabrication of processes without any delay you can incorporate these in these times so uh, i was thinking let's move one step ahead when we are talking totally about digital what will be you know uh, uh, thinking out of the box what will be the future of implantology a very brief uh you know idea i'll be taking 5 10 minutes more to complete the presentation so how we move in into the future what are the futuristic considerations or approaches which we are using in these times so uh, genomics or implantogenomics giving us a beautiful idea of the incidences of the peri implant disorders the electromagnetic field implants creating a positive must be creating because this is all you know uh, Uh, much of the much research is required to prove all these facts so obviously electromagnetic field will definitely promote the osseo integration the idea of virtuality reality augmented reality and a combination that is a mixed reality so whenever you will be doing your patients when you will be doing the implant planning or placement you will be having a more realism to what you are doing so maybe that would be the time Uh, coming maybe four to five or maybe more than that we are not sure about that but then we would have the gestures the realistic ideas of what kind of implant where we are placing we have the reality of what we are placing and the liga plant approach obviously as we say the dental implants are totally ankylosed into the bone so uh the studies have been going on to manufacture or engineer the periodontal ligament stem cells to prove or to create the artificial periodontal ligament so as uh, you know to much more improve the success of the periodontal treatment the impedance sensing surgical drill definitely we say the surgical drills we have to use copious water irrigation with the saline and definitely we have to make sure we are not 
uh, you know, causing any thermal necrosis to the bone. So this will be the surgical drill which will be coming up, and definitely this will this these sensing drills will tell us about any vital structures more than what CT is telling you. The robotic implantology, obviously, it's again doing really well, and definitely it will tend tend to give you a beautiful idea with the workflow, and this will again do wonders as far as these zygoma. implants are concerned the qr coded implantology when you need to have a good idea about the forensic identification of the implant the ultrasonic approaches the ultrasonic incorporation of the implants obviously will help in the diagnosis of the peri implant disorders into the impressions because yes they will be capturing a much better details if they are into picture particularly when we are Uh, taking about the supra gingival or gingival finish line so they'll be recording it but yes uh, research is going on again into this topic biofilm removal with the help of ultrasonic waves and uh, again a topic close to my heart is artificial intelligence wherein we will be you know with the help of the deep learning or the machine learning we'll be able to align the implants in a much better way which has a convolutional neural network and this will how uh, this will you know do wonders as far as the crown designing is concerned and obviously uh, when we are talking about the classification of dental implants we would also furthermore know through the radiographs through a series of radiographs we'll come to know that okay this kind of implant uh, has been used and how to rehabilitate it and definitely what kind of drugs or uh, the pharmacological management how it goes and uh, you know how what drugs are affecting the treatment procedures into implantology and the photogrammetric approach and obviously uh, you know you are using a photo and in conjunction with a scanner would will also one day give a very good idea of where to place the implants the shock absorber implants is just like uh, what i was telling you about the pdl uh, engineering the liga plants and this is how maybe uh, one day we'll be seeing that how it is totally equivalent to human natural tooth the shock wave therapy is again being experimented upon in which uh, particularly at a place of the dental implant placement we are giving slight waves of shock and uh, definitely this will furthermore increase or decrease uh, the time for osseo integration so very soon your osseo integration may take place again it requires a lot of research so i was planning or i was thinking there so many implant innovations will it be a virtuality or it will be reality monday but after seeing this video i feel uh, that i am totally sure that dental implants and the innovations or the futuristic approaches will become a reality one day so this slide is particularly uh, dedicated to the post graduates and undergraduates of the globe Uh, starting from how if you have a question on digital implantology or the workflow in dentistry this is how you can attempt your uh, question right from the introduction till the conclusion this may uh, really help the post graduate students in case they have a uh, essay type question on the digital implantology so this is how i have tried to create some kind of content and let me conclude uh, my session with a take home i would say not take home but a taken message that uh, there has been a paradigm shift from the analog to the digital approaches but i would really say that we first master the conventional approaches and it's all the approaches so always learn in a good way learn implantology learn conventional one piece everything and then again you have to you know be into specify into digital learn everything be master of yes the implantology one day my good wishes with you have a good knowledge be always upgraded and always follow the digital workflow right from the cbct diagnostic modalities make a good diagnostic plan reach a proper treatment be very proficient skillful start today be skillful and yes we have read so much about the digital implantology a one step ahead to digital implantology into the futuristic considerations and i feel that uh, further more research we always say uh, even in fact with lots of evidence based studies we still 
say that further research is always required. But yes, I would promise you one thing that these are uh, the digitization is always a magical. It's a dream come true. It's a promising. It's a ubiquitous tool into the digital, into the dental implantology. And uh, I was going, you know, through Facebook. And I saw uh, one kind of case like this. So I've named it uh, Desi Implantology. A cautionary measure, please don't practice such kind of implantology. And uh, in fact, <clears throat> this kind of dentistry needs to be, not to be practiced. So practice well. And uh, since it was a Sunday, I know Sundays are always lazy and hope I could make. And I didn't do like this to you on this beautiful Sunday, and I could make this lazy Sunday uh, a powerful, a power-packed Sunday. So always remember one thing, you have failures in life, try to, to do, keep doing whatever you want to, try to innovate what you want to, and definitely once you see failures, you will definitely gain success one day. So it's not about starting next tomorrow or later, try, start right now, be like a River, don't be standstill, sojourn the feeling of failures and success. So need to share some uh, books I have written as Dr. Pratik already mentioned. So some of my books related to the dental implantology, a topic which is very close to my heart. And this was a book launch. I have also written a book on digital prosthodontics. Thanks to my sweet wife, Dr. Jyotsa Sikri, being a co-author of this book and Dr. Aditya Kapoor, the second co-author of this book. And thanks to Team Dentist Channel Online, we had a book launch first time in the history of industry. It was virtual. So it was a great fun. Uh, thanks to the team and some of my brief publications and many more. Uh, but yes, uh, I think uh, I should congratulate uh, the whole team of Sinodent. Beautifully, they have come out with the idea of global healthcare for all. In these unprecedented times, see how they are bridging the gap in uh, connecting us one and all. So they are doing really well under the dynamic leadership of very dear Dr. Anmol Bagadia who has come out with her team. She is doing really well. I must congratulate her and the whole team. Uh, sorry if I have forgotten anybody, but yes, they are doing really well. And thanks once again to the whole team. This is a dedicated thought to my very dear team, Sinodent. The best thing is to hold into in life is each other. It's to everybody, but in particular, it's for my very dear and sweet team, Sinodent. Uh, again, under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Anmol Bagadia, Dr. Pratik Bambi is here, Dr. Anu, everybody, the whole team is working like a team because we know that together, everyone <coughs> achieves more. And we all know that tomorrow is the Guru Purab, the Guru Nanak Dev Jayanti. So on this auspicious occasion, I wish you each and every one of you all the best. Tomorrow it's a holiday. So enjoy your holiday. Best wishes once again. And uh, <clears throat> as we all know that COVID is still there. So please stay safe, healthy, peaceful, prosperous, stay positive. Thank you so much, one and all, my friends online, offline, teachers, parents, everybody were there. And thanks once again, Team Sanodent, for making this possible. So these are my contact details in case you wish to be connected with me on Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn, anywhere through mail. You have any queries, any questions you have, most welcome. You have any criticisms, most welcome. In case I have tried to cover each and everything, if not, uh, then yes, please, I would be always welcome to receive your suggestions, your comments. Thank you so much and namaste. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for such an amazing, enthusiastic and knowledgeable session. And sir, we have few questions. Okay. Uh, sir, are there any methods with which we can fabricate surgical guides ourselves for implant placement when the patient cannot afford the surgical guides? So uh, definitely we have to use the conventional approaches. Uh, we are using what we are doing. We are making the impressions, the diagnostic impressions, what we are doing right now. We are making the upper and the lower diagnostic impressions. And obviously uh, what we are doing, we are using a cold cure resin. We are, you know, this is a kind of, uh, you know, technique which we are already using. We can use 
a vacuum formed thermoplastic sheet uh, on which we can place the artificial teeth. Again, what we do is we prepare a hole through the central fossa. And uh, this is how, you know, we have an idea of the depth of the implant, how much I have to go in. But then we, we can't have the idea totally about the angulation. For angulation and uh, respect to the vital structures and the tissues, we need to, uh, you know, have the incorporation of the digital technology. But yes, it's not like that. You can use the, the rapid repair, the resin, the surgical template can be made with a, so, a custom tray, the resin tray. Yes, you can use other kinds of resin trays also. So always first rehabilitate the missing tooth with the artificial tooth, prepare or again with the resin tray, with the vacuum form sheet. You can use anything. That is how we move conventionally. Thank you. Uh, so another question is from Dr. Muktesh, uh, which is the better mode to st uh, stable the implant coping while making multiple implant impression? So, uh, yeah, Dr. Sahib, there are so many approaches. What we have uh, read in literature, I feel uh, whenever you want to stabilize, you have full mouth implants. So we talk about either it's a conventional implants or a one piece implant. For a conventional implant, when you are trying to stabilize the impression copings. So the best part is till now what I have read, people are using acrylic resin, they are using a composite resin or better is to use a pattern resin. So when you are using a pattern resin to stabilize your impression copings, again, the idea is to avoid or reduce any kind of implant micro movement because this may lead to any hamper to the osseo integration. The other aspect which is going on in the one piece implants is using a very thick gauge, titanium gauge wire. Uh, there is a concept known as intraoral welding that is also known as syn crystallization. So when you have placed, you know, either the one piece or the basal implants or the pterygoid, zygomas, whatever one piece implants you are using. So what you can do is you have the intraoral welding machine. You can take the wire, appropriate wire has to be cut. You place it, you have to give two shots with the help of a plunger and there and then your, uh, you know, your titanium wire sets in, you can make the impression thereby. So it depends on the clinical situation, what kind of you are using. If you are using multiple full mouth implants conventionally, use a pattern resin. There is a recent study in general of prosthetic dentistry, uh, which says that uh, you must be using orthodontic bands. So you can use orthodontic bands just to stabilize the impression copings over which you can use the pattern resin to furthermore stabilize the multiple impression copings. And ideally for one piece basal implants, basal osseo integrated implants, you can use the intraoral welding wire. So that's the best part. Uh, you know, there will be no, there will be minute uh, micro movement as far as the conventional or the one piece implants are concerned. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I would like to invite Dr. Anmol to conclude the session. Evening, everyone who are present here from India and all parts of the globe. Thank you for being with us. I hope you are enjoying the learning experience with us. I, I would like to thank uh, sir for giving us this valuable time this evening and also for delivering such an informative lecture. So thank you for enhancing our knowledge and skills. It was a pleasure having you, and it is our honor and privilege to have you here. Thank you so much, sir. And I would also like to thank each and every member of my team, Sainodin. Thank you. And also Dr. Anu and Dr. Pratik for hosting the session. Thank you so much, Dr. Anmol, Dr. Pratik, and Dr. Anu Vashish, uh, so for giving me a chance to you know come over here. I deem it an opportunity. It's a sir, great it's pleasure. It's our honor and pleasure to have you here. Yes, thank you sir. so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much, sir. Stay safe and healthy. Keep smiling. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir.